Throughout the history of theme parks, we've seen plenty of coasters be scrapped before they're built. However, most of these coasters are pretty dog water, so it's kind of a good thing that they were scrapped. Like, bro, what, what am I even looking at here? The thing is, though, there are a handful of coasters that looked and sounded actually good that got canceled at the last minute for one reason or another. So, in today's video, we're going to go through and look at six of the best coasters that were never built. Why six, you may ask? Well, I don't really know. It's just the first number that came to mind when writing this script. Anyways, I know I haven't been uploading that much as of recently. That's hopefully going to get better as I was just like... Like really busy with finals and other stuff at the end of the school year, but I'll have more time to work on the videos over the summer. I don't think I'm going to quite go back to weekly, but three times a month doesn't seem like too unrealistic of a goal. I'm still trying to make like 30 videos by the end of the year, and right now I've only made 11, so I kind of got to pick up the pace. All right, enough blabbing, let's get into the coasters. Let's start off with one that kind of in spirit got built. That's not really true, I just wanted to put the Lost Coaster footage on screen. In the early 2000s, Universal wanted to build a big coaster in the Jurassic Park section of the Islands of Adventure. This was going to be a major thrill ride in the form of a hyper. How they would theme this to Jurassic Park, I have no f***ing idea. Like, it really makes no sense. This would have started where Skull Island is now and gone, I guess, through where the Lost Coaster is and back. This probably would have been some sort of hyper twister due to the limited space, but that also would have maybe given them room to do some greenery and rock work because of the low to the ground sections. I don't really know, there wasn't that much information about this, I just thought it was cool because it's basically Velocicoaster 1.0. As for the manufacturer, I'm sure they go with B&M because they already built a mini hyper in Japan, so they probably just stick with that. And honestly, I'm glad they didn't go through with this. Velocicoaster is just better than any B&M hyper universe could cook up, even if they didn't have these space constraints. So personally, I'm going to say it's a good thing that this didn't get built. Okay, this isn't really a specific cancelled coaster, this is more of a specific cancelled concept. You know these astronaut space training videos you see online where they're spinning in this ball thing? Okay, yeah, so now imagine if they made that into a coaster. I'm sorry, wait. <laughs> I just, <clears throat> like, WHAT?! Who in their right mind would want to go on this on a roller coaster track? Like, look at that. Ugh. That looks like X2 if it were designed by a five year old mixed with a hamster ball. It's pretty obvious why this didn't get built. Apparently, SNS picked up the ride concept and, uh,. So yeah, this is kind of just like a terrible predecessor to the Axis Coaster because God knows if they actually built it, it would be a hot mess. I mean, just look at how many different ways this thing can rotate. Like, that just doesn't look natural. That's not how roller coasters move. I'm really glad they didn't build this because that would have been a disaster. There was also a drop tower with this concept cooked into it that honestly looked like a slice of hell. Like really, how would flipping upside down, sideways, and left and right while dropping straight down be a good idea? It wouldn't. It's crazy that adult engineers designed these these Sonic the Hedgehog goofy looking ass ring coasters. Again, I'm very glad this didn't get built because that would be one coaster I would gladly skip. Fiesta Texas's key feature is the quarry wall, separating it from any other Six Flags park. A lot of the coasters use the quarry wall to its advantage, along with it just being sick that there's an amusement park built on it. One of the examples of this is Superman Krypton Coaster, a B&M floorless that dives on and off the quarry. But what if I were to tell you that before this B&M creation, it was first a Togo? Yes. Togo, the manufacturer of the infamous Big Apple coaster. But the thing is, overseas Togo isn't really that bad. Overseas Togo can actually be quite good. This layout didn't even look all that bad. Is it better than the Superman we have today? Well, no. But it's a cool looking ride with his triple helixes and sharp airtime hills and quarry first drop. We don't really know why this got scrapped, but whatever the reason is, I'm actually going to say I'm neutral on this one. I really wouldn't mind either way. I haven't been on the floorless Superman that's there today, but like, it's a floorless. It can't be that good, can it? The Togo would definitely be more unique. Or it could be a dumpster fire. I don't know, to me it just kind of looked cool, but since it never got built... I guess we'll never know. Going all the way back to the 50s for Disneyland, we have Rock Candy Mountain, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Think Big Thunder Mountain with candy all over it. This would have had a couple of other rides worked into it, aside from the roller coaster, like canal boats and the circus train. There's not much known about what the actual coaster would have been, as it eventually got scrapped, because Imagineers basically decided that putting candy on the outside of a mountain looked sickly and like a stomach ache. And yeah, I get it, I kind of agree with their sentiment, but then what the fuck was this, bro? You literally built a castle out of cake. Like really, Rock Candy Mountain doesn't sound nearly as disgusting, as repulsive as this display of artistic chaos. I will say though, the one good thing is that the mountain was in spirit built as the Matterhorn bobsleds. It's not quite the sweet adventure that Rocky Candy Mountain would have been, but I'm sure the coaster section is close enough in experience. And although I'm pretty sure the ride experience would have been pretty similar to the Matterhorn, at least from a coaster perspective, I kind of honestly think this is the first one I'm going to say I wish got built. I don't know, man. We really just don't have a lot of candy stuff in amusement parks. Imagine them pumping the fumes as candy as you go through different sections 
sections of the layout with you know candy cane parts and lollipop parts and the splash into a chocolate river i don't know it just looks like a kind of cool idea that's all i'm saying so going from a really old one to a really recent one, if you've been keeping up with the coaster industry, you might remember a little while ago that there were some rumors and even leaks of an RMC Raptor going to Kentucky Kingdom. But unfortunately, it never saw the light of day. This would be the standard RMC Raptor model like Railblazer and Wonder Woman, not the Jersey Devil Big One. It was really close to being finalized, but then it got lost in the shuffle of the Kentucky Kingdom Hershen buyout. And honestly, I'm okay with that. An RMC Raptor just seems too similar to Storm Chaser and Lightning Run combined. I feel like Kentucky Kingdom needs something smooth and graceful like a B&M Hyper before another coaster that tries to kill you. So for this one, I'm going to say I'm okay with this not being built. You've probably seen or at least heard of this coaster. This is the Stratosphere Fishbowl Coaster. Basically, this would be a 700 foot fish hook coaster that would plummet down from the top of the tower and then back up to burn off speed. There are models, plans, and this was even fully announced. As crazy as it sounds, this 700 foot coaster was really close to being built. The only reason it wasn't was because Arrow, who were gonna build this coaster, kinda just went out of business. So no, this wasn't really canceled in a traditional sense. It was just kinda in the crossfire of the bankruptcy and fell through. And ain't nobody else trying to build this 700 foot monstrosity. I mean, like, like, look at this. I could have maybe seen Intamin, but they didn't want to do it back then, so I doubt they'll want to do it now. And that kind of sucks, because I don't think we're ever going to see anything of this caliber ever again. The only thing I could think of that would get close is that 500-foot thing in Saudi Arabia, which I do have a video on if you want to check that out, because this video is over. So yeah, I'm just going to say that I wish this one wasn't cancelled, because it looks pretty fun. Anyways, that's going to be it for the video. Again, uploads are going to start more consistently, coming soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.